It's like we brought a new little wave too, for like, we ain't with that cow rapping that shit. I ain't gonna lie. It should be cow for real. It should really be cow. We be making like real gangsters want to go make a song. It's like, we got real gangsters and shit rapping that. Like. Before Pusha T would get signed by Gucci Mane to his 1017 record label. Okay, so how I walk find you? Through Instagram. Instagram. Yep. He reached out well, to you he himself. Heard one of my songs on YouTube and hit me on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, he reached out himself. Before Pusha T would get arrested in connection with a shooting that took place in Bay Harbor Islands that left two men hospitalized. Before Pusha T would have over 250k subscribers on YouTube across two channels, 51k followers on Twitter, and over 1 million followers on Instagram at the time of this recording. Memphis-born rapper Pusha T not only has one of the most unique rap names in the game, he also spits the kind of airy beats that pair nicely with his venomous delivery and slick produced melodies. Over the last year or so, he's racked up millions of streams and views while maintaining his independent status. Hell, this entrepreneurial kid even kickstarted his own record label long before he signed on to one himself. You want to explain that? That's a company or what? Is that your yeah. brand affiliated with Gucci Mane or what? No, I ain't affiliated. This is my brand before Gucci Mane. Okay, you got any yeah. any artists up under there? Most definitely. You want to name them? Yup. I got, I got Hank, I got Walt, and I got K. Cobb. Okay. Unfortunately, he's also been in the news lately for all the wrong reasons after he was arrested and then released from jail following a double shooting. This was an argument, a shooting, and now an all-out investigation. All of this, according to the town manager, unfolding right here in a parking lot outside of this apartment complex, which actually happens to be right across the street from the Bay Harbor Islands Police Department. The town manager says one man shot two others. Everybody sped away. It remains to be seen how exactly these charges will shake out, but in the meantime, I thought I'd circle back in time and let you guys all know how Push IC got to this moment. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Azalea Hart, back at it again with a brand new video, this one taking a look at the life and times of Pooh Shiesty prior to fame here for you on Before They Were Famous. Pooh has been blowing up over the past 8 months and while he recently hit a bit of a legal speed bump, I don't doubt that things will work themselves out and this will all just be a blip in a story way down the line. For now, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Azalea Zoe and follow our page at Before They Were Famous. Alright, but for now, let's get into the story. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Pooh C was born Lontrell Williams on November 8th, 2000 in South Memphis, Tennessee. His father was the Memphis-based rapper Mob Boss, the founder of Mob Ties Records, and a pretty integral presence in young Shicey's life. What about your, your pops and shit? Was your pops around? Yeah, most definitely. Pops been around from the start unless he was locked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the only time he went around. Being the son of a musician, it was really only a matter of time before Chaisty took his own crack at the game, but before he could do that, he had some growing up to do. As a young kid, Memphis was pretty tough on him because he'd never know when he was going to lose someone he cared about to the streets. Y'all yeah. had to grow up fast in Memphis? Hell yeah. You going to lose, but I swear to God, like, you going to lose a nigga close to you before 15? Oh God, like that'll hurt you, like, it, it, it going to happen. Having to keep your head on a swivel was bad enough, but then when Chicey was only around 11, he got arrested for a crime and claims he was tried as an adult. Resulted in being placed under house arrest with an ankle monitor on him at all times. I was I was checking out your Instagram. I seen the picture of you, I think you was 11. You said 11, um, it was something about you was 11 and 12 or something with you or something, but you had an ankle monitor on. Did you talk about that? I was on the ankle Mm -hmm. Whoa, so they charged you at, ele at 11 years old as an adult? Damn, that's crazy. That's crazy. Once he was attending Hamilton Middle School, Shiesty continued having problems keeping himself off the street. He would get kicked out of school only to return multiple times. I tell you how my, how my school experience went look, from 6th grade on up. 6th um, grade, boom. Started out free. Got kicked out. You know, the juvenile. Boom. So I had to go to I had to go to uh alternative school. Back then they had MLK. I'm the only young nigga sixth grade, everybody else high school, so I'm thugging in MLK. 
So boom. By the time he was a teenager and attending Central High School, he wasn't behaving all that different. He'd spend some time in class and then feel the pull of the streets calling him again. At around this point in his life, Shicey left Memphis with his mom and they moved to Texas where he learned how to adapt to new surroundings. About two years later, he returned to Memphis and attended summer school and online courses in order to earn his high school diploma at 18 years old. But I got back in school and finished this shit though, but I had, I had missed the whole year of high school. Despite his academic situation, the last thing you could say about Chai C is that he didn't work hard. Not only was he putting all that time into the streets, but thanks to his dad's reputation in the music scene, he was also visiting recording studios from a very young age. As a teen, Shai C launched the Choppa Gang Entertainment, his own label, and he began perfecting his wordplay by taking any and every opportunity to freestyle with his buddies and fellow crew members, whether in the lunchroom or on the block or online as well. After graduating high school, music became his entire focus and he started to put his talent on display for the world to see, uploading his tracks to YouTube. He kicked things off with songs like Weak Ass and Breaking News. Then in March of 2020, he dropped the video for his single, Main Slime, and released a remix featuring Moneybag Yo and Tay Keith a couple months later. This single drew the attention of Gucci Mane and the two hooked up through Instagram. Within a couple months, Gucci signed Shicey to his 1017 record label. By June of 2020, he was being featured on the Gucci single, Still Remember. Next, he appeared on the compilation album, Gucci Mane Presents So Icy Summer. Gucci told XXL, I'm in a better place than I have ever been in my life. Even though the world is deteriorating around me, I want to share with new artists. I feel like I got a lot of knowledge. I've always been charitable with my time and knowledge. I always embrace the hardcore rapper that don't nobody want to f with, that everyone blackballed or whatever. Those be the people I open my doors to. Not long after giving that interview, Shiesty would unintentionally test those very words after he got himself wrapped up in some legal troubles as a result of a shooting that took place in Florida. Apparently what happened is this. Two men were scheduled to meet up with Shiesty and his crew to partake in a couple different deals, one for Air Jordan sneakers, the other involving weed, and a payment collection for a McLaren that Shiesty had been renting. Shots ended up getting fired and the two men who were there to deal with Shiesty ended up being admitted to the hospital with gunshot wounds. What caused this assault is unclear, but Shiesty reportedly drove away with his crew and fled the scene, leaving behind a Louis Vuitton bag full of $30,000 in cash. When police arrived, they were able to ID the bag and serial numbers of the cash thanks to photos that Shiesty uploaded to his Instagram account. Shiesty turned himself in and was booked into the Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Center in West Miami, facing charges such as armed robbery with a firearm, aggravated assault with a firearm, aggravated battery with a deadly weapon doing great bodily harm, and theft. Shicey's bond was set, ironically enough, at 30000 and my man must have had another bag just lying around at home because he posted it pretty quickly. It's unclear exactly how this case will pan out at this point. It's been reported that the two victim stories aren't adding up, and the fact that they were there to admittedly sell drugs doesn't give them a whole lot of credibility. But we'll keep an eye on the story as it unfolds and update it accordingly. As for the rest of his story, well, I think we'll bring this story to an end for now. After all, this is before they were famous. What did you guys think about Pooh Shicey's story? Do you think he'll beat these charges? Let me know in the comments below. Follow us on Instagram at Before They're Famous to vote on who's next. And follow me too at Azalea Zoe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, we drop a new video each and every day, so here's a recent drop that you might enjoy. We handpicked that one for you because if you like this video, you'll probably like that. We also got playlists like over here, so click on that if you want to see a whole list of a bunch of videos we've dropped in the past. And if you're new to the Fame Gang, be sure to subscribe and turn on them post notifications. And I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!